All right. Good evening, everyone. Tonight is another Dev Meet, and we have some awesome speakers um, tonight, or we have some great information that'll be helpful for your career pursuits in the tech industry. So tonight we have Jason Grogan, who is a former Bottega uh, student. He's an alumni, and um, he has some awesome information to share about the tech industry and getting involved in it, as well as some things that he has learned in his own professional journey. So Jason, I'm going to let you uh, introduce yourself and take over. All right. Um, welcome. Uh, thanks for having me. Yeah. Wow, where to begin? Um, I actually started in uh, computer programming back in the late 70s, early 80s. And so I uh, was a mainframe programmer. So some of you may understand what that is. Some of you might have even heard of the old punch card system. <laughs> That's what I started out programming at. Um, and so had a, a break for several years um, while I was in the military. And then once I was out of the military, kind of got back into it, um, did it for a while, uh, back with mainframe, COBOL, um, assembler, SQL was the main languages that I dealt with at that time. And then again, took uh, about a 20 year break and have just gotten back into it just um, about three years ago. And a lot has changed um, in the tech world for sure. Um, one, the greatest thing I think is how quickly everything moves. Uh, um, it's no longer dial up. Um, <laughs> uh, so that kind of dates me on some of this stuff. So, um, Bottega was great. Um, I did their, the boot camp, um, and basically learned JavaScript, Python, React, um, HTML, CSS, all that stuff. And then on top of that, I also did, um, what was called the workflow Academy and learned Zoho and their, um, actual, their own language called Deluge which is based off of JavaScript. And so that is what I do now is uh, work as a Zoho developer um, for a consulting company out of Houston, Texas. I'm actually in Kansas. Um, so it's kind of interesting, the remote aspect of everything. We are all, my company is 100% remote. I'm in Kansas. Um, my boss and VP are in Houston, Texas. My um, two... Uh, the consultants are in Albuquerque. One other developer is there in Albuquerque, New Mexico as well. And then one in just outside of Salt Lake, Utah. And then our office manager is in the Philippines. So it's it's interesting how we can all be working and connecting. And so, yeah. Trying to think. Uh, yeah, yeah what do you excellent. want? Excellent. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. So um, tell us a little bit about what um, you learned, especially coming from, you know, a different background um, or learning tech back when things were very different for you. Tell us a little bit about how you um, adjusted and what are some of the things that kind of helped you adjust to the modernization of the tech industry? And what are some of the things that you learned? Yeah, um, so basically the the type of programming that i started out with was more uh linear uh program would start you know basically like at the top of the page and just the logic flow would go from top to bottom you may branch out once in a while um, to a different program or module but you always came back to the spot that you left and, and then you continued on and so that was a big um a big change for me because with you know HTML um, and all these new languages, you can start in one spot and never ever have to go back to that spot again. And so that that took some adjusting for me uh, to do. I'm I'm a logic guy. Um, that's where a lot of you know the to me the early programming was was all based on logic, um, if then type of statements. Um, so a lot of uh, flow charts. Um, hand drawn um, these tools that they have now, um, like uh, Lucid charts and stuff. Is like, ah, where were you thirty years ago when I could have really used you? 
Um, but uh, so, yeah, so I think it's, it's a lot more fast paced now, but it's still, it boils down to logic, being able to follow the flow um, and syntax. Um, syntax is, a, that's always, you know, once you kind of get the hang of that, that and then you master the um, the logic part pretty much all programming boils down to the same same stuff so um so yeah some of the new technology of course i mean you know i can work from anywhere that's great i mean before i always had to have a phone line if i was not in the office um i had to worry about um being able to um have dial up access uh, the computer speeds, of course, are a lot faster. I mean, I can do half my stuff on my phone. Um, I can do more on my phone than what I could do 30 years ago in programming. That's for sure. Um, some of the things that I learned, um, Bottega yeah, was really, um, it was great with the various um, different uh, languages and the different setups on them. Um, all the different tools too, um, GitHub, uh, things like that, being able to share um, code, that's that's great. Um, there's a lot better tracking system than what it was um, 30 years ago because I could be working on a part of the program and if someone else came in and didn't realize I was working on that and grabbed it and I go to put my changes in and then they put theirs in without mine, boom, it would, you know, it would mess things up big time. So the, just the availability now of being able to um, do different versions um, and have a checkout system, that, that's, that's a huge improvement. Um, and that was some of the cool things that I've really been thankful for um, in this new learning process. Excellent. Yeah, the the tech industry is constantly changing and new advancements are are always coming out. Um, so I'm sure over the course of 30 years, things are quite different, um, which is awesome because a lot of the tools utilized now um, can be very beneficial, especially in those team settings that you were talking about. So what languages do you use on a day to day basis? Um, so I um, use Deluge pretty much uh, um, the whole time. Um, it is the proprietary language of uh, the software package that we support. Um, and so I do also have to use APIs. Um, so we do connect to other stuff, but my primarily it's it's all Deluge um, that I use. Um, and some, I guess I could say some JavaScript since it is JavaScript based. Um, it can also handle PHP, um, which I'm looking at, um, hopefully this next year, um, picking up some courses on that. Um, but, um, primarily right now, just, uh, the deluge language and it's fantastic. a scripting language. So, okay. All right. Fantastic. Um, I may be a little bit, I may be the only one here who doesn't know what that language is, but, um, but yeah, that's awesome. So what tools do you use on a day-to-day -day basis or at least um, semi-regularly to help you stay current? Um, so we basically, um, Zoho encapsulates uh, 50 different apps. And so I'm basically in um, the various apps. The, their main one is their CRM. And so that's what I do a lot of work in on a regular basis. And so what I do is um, we uh, consult with different clients. We either help them get set up if they've never had Zoho before. Um, we get everything set up for them and then we can customize it. And so I basically, anything that it can't do out of the box um, and the client wants, if I can make it happen, we pretty much make it happen. Um, and so... The, it has its built-in editor um, in each of the apps. Uh, so you have your, you know, you got to have your, your sandbox environment that you can use. Um, but I pretty much, I log into whatever client I'm working on, onto their system and do all the changes on there. Um, we have communication. One of the communication tools um, is Click. 
that's um kind of like a um oh what do you call it like slack um it would be considerable to that uh we have a connect board that um, we post tasks on we use projects um, to track our projects as well uh, we can do our time management in that and in the crm uh, so i also use github um, we since we have a, now a small team of developers and we're sharing code all the time, uh, we've started our own kind of internal, I'm using GitHub. And so Google Calendar, um, that's a big one too. I have that all synced on my phone and everything. So I can have people book appointments with me through that, which then in turn books on our CRM um, for us. I get notifications uh things like that so yeah google mail and google calendar and then one of my favorite tools that i use quite often that um, i learned in uh, from both Bottega and um, the workflow academy was um, online json viewer and i use that almost daily because i'm always having to figure out what what the client's trying to send and to be able to break down and make sure it's compatible um, with the system. Great, excellent. So um, I'm not sure if you already had a position lined up post-graduation, um, but, or if you were going back through, you know, or you were going through the boot camp at Bottega um, as a part of like professional development, but if you weren't, um, what was the biggest challenge that you had in trying to find a job in the tech industry? And this can be before Bottega or after Bottega, but what was the biggest challenge in trying to find a job in the tech industry and how did you overcome that? Um, yeah, it was, it was kind of daunting because um, I would start applying while I was in um, going through Bottega. And I mean, it was just, you know, from 30 years ago, when you would apply to a company, you pretty much would get a response. Even if it was a no, you pretty much would get a letter um, and stuff. And so that was very disheartening is because I was sending out resume after resume, you know, to all these positions. You know, LinkedIn was a big um, tool that I used to be able to apply um, flex jobs and we work remotely because I was I was definitely looking for remote work um, because I'm a disabled veteran. Uh, my body doesn't do um, well. And so it was just easier to to be working from home. Um, and so I just send an out. Oh, man, I can't even tell you how many how many ones I applied to. Um, I think you know, probably several hundred. And I think I only had maybe 20, 30 responses. Um, and then when I, when I was finishing up the Workflow Academy, they happened to, um, the head of that had someone in mind for me and I interviewed with them and was hired the next day. And so I finished up both things and then, a, you know, a couple of weeks later, I actually started working. Awesome. So I lucked out is what I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, it tends to happen that way, though. Um, oftentimes I hear from from our graduates where, you know, some they have something lined up um, before they're ready to graduate. Um, and then others, you know, they sit there and they apply and apply. Um, and then out of the blue, something just works. Um, so, you know, sometimes some of us just have to wait until that perfect opportunity or that right opportunity that's for us. But a good follow-up question for that was how much like programming or practice did you do um, daily during that waiting period to help remain like current and on top of um, your, your coding abilities? Um, so like, did you just, and I'm assuming you didn't, um, but you know, did you code every day or every other day or how did you like remain vigilant in that process? Yeah, I was, I mean, I was fortunate because I was kind of still um, doing it as I was going along and applying. Um, and so I was pretty much doing stuff every day. 
um, for it. And even um, I'm trying to keep up on, since I'm not using, you know, Python and um, some of the ones that I learned, I'm still, still trying to make sure I'm keeping up current with that. And so it's, it's checking in, um, you know, Reddit, <laughs> it sounds wild, but uh, Reddit actually, it's neat to keep up with that um, because it, gives you hints and other people dealing with it too. So um, it's one of those things that if you don't, um, it's it's like any language, even, even verbal language, if you don't use it, um, you can lose it. And so um, it, it helps to be in it. Um, and like I said, I think I was pretty much in it every day. Um, just trying, you know, and I did get, you know, some of the interviews that I did have, um, on some of those notifications, there was a couple of them that, that wanted me to move. And I just, you know, I got kids and grandkids in the area and I'm just like, nah, I'm, I'm staying here. Um, so that kind of deterred some stuff, but, um, and then, um, but yeah, staying relevant because, uh, that was probably a big thing too, is there was several of them that I actually had to take, um, online tests for. Um, coding tests. And so it's, it was definitely helpful that um, I was working on the stuff every day um, because yeah, it would have been scary otherwise. Yeah. I can't imagine uh, being out of like graduating and then being out of school and not working in on your code in some form or fashion, and then be expected to take a test um, and trying to recall all that information, that would be very challenging. So, you know, staying relevant is a, and up to date on everything is very important. So a good follow up to that, um, how did your Bottega training help prepare you for your career? Um, I would say um, being flexible and um, learning the various you know, different languages they, they touched on, you know, it wasn't like, oh, I, it was strictly, they concentrated on one. No, it gave you a wide um, base of information, which is helpful. And from, you know, talking with other developers now, um, it seems that you pretty much, once you get the basics um, and understanding of any, and this is what a lot of employers actually look for, is your adaptability um, to be able to pick things up and, and go with it. And so and that was probably one of the big things about Bottega is they didn't just concentrate on one area. They gave you a vast, um, vast amount of resources and um, different challenges. Fantastic. Yeah. And, and that's what we, we hear a lot from our graduates is that they're, you know, you hear or you get to work with the front end as well as the back end. And, you know, you get a, a little bit of both, uh, which helps build uh, your ability to to learn both. Um, and that's that's the whole part of, you know, the coding process and learning these languages. Um, so what is the biggest tip or the best tip that you can give to up and coming developers? who are trying to enter into the tech industry. Don't give up. Uh, um, there's, I mean, some will say, oh, it's it's tough to get into. Um, it, it is in a sense, but um, persistence pays off. And this is one of the things that um, I would say too, when you're applying, make sure you're following up too, because you may not hear from them. And sometimes they're getting, you know, uh, unfortunately they're getting, you know, thousands of resumes. What do you, what can you do to stand out? Well, to follow up, that's, that's a big deal. I think that's kind of a lost art nowadays um, is that we just take for granted that, oh, well, you know, there's more jobs out there. Well, yeah, there's a ton out there, but there's also a ton of people trying to go for them too. So, um, but just, just hang in there, um, keep, keep applying and don't be afraid to say no if something comes up and you just don't feel like it's the right fit for you either. Absolutely. And it's, it's very interesting that you say um, to follow up because that's actually something that I stress, you know, in the the career development department quite a bit. Uh, whenever 
um, I'm meeting with students, you know, the biggest thing that I encourage is to apply for the jobs that you, you feel that you um, are most um, adept to, you know, doing the things that you're most interested in doing on a day-to-day -day basis, as well as um, like when you apply for them to, you know, if it's an in-person position, you know, make sure you take like a thank you card um, and that little bit of, um, I guess, the, the little reminder that, that that thank you card Hello. gives, it, rem it reminds, um, it reminds the employee Employer that you're you're uh, interviewing with, that you know you are who you are, and um, I don't know. It just puts a great image in their mind and really helps them um, make that decision. Um, and I know I got a little bit distracted in saying all that, but the other thing is, you know, when you um, do an online interview, you can also send an email, and and that puts a great uh, image in their mind for you as well. So I'm, I'm glad you said that, Jason. It looks like we have a message in the chat function. Um, so looks like uh, Ryan has some comments for you, Jason. So you might want to take a look at that. Um, does anybody else have any questions? Yeah, I'm reading it right now. Awesome. And you're correct, Ryan. It is um, it is tough because there's so many different languages out there. Um, which ones do you choose? And I and I think too, um, Jessica just said it correctly too. In the fact that you know, pick some that you you know that you feel most comfortable in, and the better you can become in that, um, the more marketable I think you're going to be. Um, but it doesn't hurt to have have a basic knowledge um, as 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 many you can um, but and and I'm old school this is one of the things that helped me when I took those tests for these companies I took handwritten notes all the time so I have notebooks and I have bookmarks on them to for certain um, things that I know oh this is something a potential employer would probably ask I have those bookmarks so it was easily accessible instead of trying to flip back from screen to screen, I'm, I just use my notebook. Awesome. So Jason, real quick, what are some of the things, um, some of the projects and things that you include on like your portfolio um, or what are some, or how often do you include and work on little private projects for your portfolio? Um, yeah, um, so basically, I try to have out there each of the, the languages that I've learned and that I'm learning. I try to make at least one project for each one. And I also want to make it look good. If I don't feel comfortable, if I don't think it looks good, I'm not going to put it on my um, portfolio. I'm not going to have it accessible until I have it, you know, um, to my high expectations, um, being former military, I, I tend to have higher standards for myself than even my, my current employer does. Um, and so just, I try to keep it current, um, when I can. Uh, um, but right now I'm so busy with my day job that, uh, I'm not getting a whole lot of time to, to work on anything else. I do get a lot of, uh, requests to do side projects um but um i basically i'm old school i have a no compete clause with my boss it's not a uh an actual physical written one i know some companies require that i just have a verbal agreement that i won't do anything that is zoho related outside of my normal hours um i've done some website stuff but that's not zoho so um, there's nothing wrong. She doesn't care about that, but I just, I've agreed not to do any Zoho stuff outside, even though I get bombarded all the time and wanting me to. Okay. So it looks like uh, Colton put a question in our chat. What are some non-code related questions to expect in interviews? 
Um, I would, you know, probably a big one is um, dependability. Uh, um, and with remote work, um, one of the cool things is, is that um, I can take my work anywhere, um, but I'm expected to be available the hours of 8 to 5 p.m. Um, now, if I'm going to be traveling and stuff, you know, for vacation type, I don't have to check in and work, but since most of it's on my phone, I do. Um, but I know some of a couple of our people, they'll work overnight, um, just because they're younger and they like to stay up late or whatever. So they're going to kind of ask, um, some of the questions I was asked and one that actually, what the boss told me, um, is why she picked me over the other guy I was competing against was because I said, I'm pretty much going to stay there until I retire. Um, and so that was one of the questions that she asked is, you know, how long do you think you'll stay around? Um, and I said, till I retire. Um, and that's what she said, got really got me to job because she felt like the other guy was only going to stick around for a year or two and then go find something else. So, um, and I got asked questions about my family. I got asked questions um, about my health because I am a disabled um, veteran. Um, you know, they, they needed to know. And I was forthright with them too. kind of told them, you know, this is the stuff I have been having to go through. Um, so I may miss, you know, work for this or that um, due to health reasons, but she was pretty cool about it. And even with time off, it's um, she's kind of the type where um, as long as you're getting your work done, <laughs> she doesn't care um, how much I take off. I've actually heard that yes, from. They, yeah. Do homework or coding exercises. Yes. Yeah. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. glad you, no, no, you're fine, Jason. I'm glad you answered that question because um, I was about to to bring that up. But I've also heard um, from a lot of our graduates where um, if they have an online position um, that is, you know, strictly remote, that it is rather flexible. Like a lot of the the tech jobs that are remote tend to be a little bit more flexible as long as you get your work done. So that's awesome. Yeah, and like my daughter, she um, she works um, for a marketing agency, and yeah, she's as long as she's getting her stuff done. And there's times that he'll call after hours or things like that, um, where my boss is pretty much uh, she doesn't believe in uh, uh, working weekends and doesn't believe in working after hours. Um, she goes, "No, if you want to work after hours, that's on you," but she doesn't require it. Excellent. All right. So thank you so much, Jason, for taking the time tonight um, and, you know, discussing all of these these fun questions and things about the, the career market and industry for, for the tech world. Um, you can you're more than welcome to stick around um, and students, you guys and alumni, you guys can ask questions to Jason in the chat function and uh, you can just monitor that, Jason. But if you have to go, that's yeah. OK as well. You can uh, link your LinkedIn account um, in there, which you might want to do anyways, just so everybody can connect with you. Um, and that would be a great opportunity for networking. OK. Awesome. Thank, Thank you. All. Again. Yeah. All right, so next up, we have um, some very helpful information from one of your TAs, actually. So, JP, um, it is your turn. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Not um, much of an introduction. My bad, JP. <laughs> no, you're good. Um, hi, everybody. I, I know most everybody in here, or I've either been in class with you or whatever, you know, we've been along the way through here. Um, some of the things that I've learned after graduating, it's very tough. And like Jason said, don't quit. Don't give up. I spoke with one of my good friends tonight before I came in to have her give me like, like some pointers or maybe something to give y'all. She was going to try to come in tonight and talk. She's a self-taught dev. And she kind of like was like, yeah, no, it's tough. She's like, don't give up. Uh, don't get discouraged, especially if you're self-taught or even a boot camp grad. 
Um, I know I face, you know, trying to find a job of that nature and I don't have a degree. So I face that a lot, but like she said, yeah, don't let that discourage you. And every time I go to a dev meet here locally, I talk to the people who run the dev meets. Um, and it's, a, it's a place you can go online. Most people have, if you live in big cities, it's like meetup.com and you can find like local tech groups that meet up probably once a month or whatever. We have a game in one. We have, we have one that just literally talks about SQL. We have ones that they have topics that they kind of do and they also have meetups like food and stuff. So like you can always kind of mingle with them. Um, some other pointers that she said is like, you know, always stay coding, even though if you don't have a an idea or something, try to find something to do to keep your, um, that, uh, that developer muscle going. Cause if not, you will lose it. Cause like Jason did say like, you know, it's a language. If we don't use it, we lose it. And like the biggest thing that she said, take away is networking. And I've done that a lot. So by going to those tech meets, I met a lot of people throughout, um, the area I'm in, which is Birmingham. And I've actually got some phone calls and some emails saying, you know, hey, that they've got my name for somebody or they have heard that I'm looking. And maybe currently they don't have anything, but like, you know, they will definitely keep me in mind when something does come up. And some of them I haven't even sent a resume too. They just have heard me my name through like people at the dev meet talking about me or whatever at their job. Um and they say, always ask questions, yeah, even if you feel like it's a dumb one, ask it anyways, because you might be, it might be a legit question. And you may be challenging someone else to, um, that doesn't know the answer. And so like you kind of bettering your team as well. Some things I was told to focus on, even though if it's not, you know, just a language, because there's a lot of them out there and every company has a different tech stack. And you can look at their tech stacks, and if you're trying to go after a certain company, then definitely learn their tech stack. Uh, but Git and GitHub is like a big thing because, you know, a lot of people work remote, so that's like a big way of sharing information in your code. And if all is possible, try to, like, pair pair up with your friends or, or your colleagues and um, do, like, pair coding because um, this can be more job-like functional because you're going you're to code not just by yourself. You're going to work as a team. So that's like some important things that you can do on your own before you ever get hired. That's some of the things that I got. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, JP. Um, so I guess I could have done a little bit of a better job uh, kind of introducing all of this, but JP shared a lot of really helpful information uh, last week with me, some stuff that I had never heard of. So JP, will you give um, all of our current students and our alumni um, a little bit of a background on, you know, how to find these meetups and how to find um, these groups of people who um, are in the tech industry and can, you know, you can network with and connect with. Um, share a little bit about how you found some. Yeah, absolutely. Um... Well, like LinkedIn has been a big, big thing um, for me to find these tech groups locally. I went on LinkedIn and actually was typing in trying to find a job locally, you know, and everywhere I've, you know, if, sorry, say if I applied for a job, I would literally look at the job. I would search the business on LinkedIn and then I would find out who works there. And then I would go through their LinkedIn and see, you know, what they've posted because a lot of times they'll post stuff on their linkedin that says um anything about a dev meetup locally or even an event happening so all those those key points is, you know it's, it's almost full of stalkerish i guess but like going through and it's public information so you'll find it out in there they'll, they'll have something posted on their on their linkedin saying you know dev meet or maybe they'll post a, um, a clip it from it and then you can go in there and find that and then find out what groups you're involved and i, I think i've seen someone post something about discord so they, they they i found one here locally that's in discord and then slack has been another one and so i actually joined i found one in slack was locally and that's how i got involved in the dev meets here that's also extended me out to like going to like libraries even and like finding out postings in libraries of saying you know like there's a guy who teaches tech stuff on the weekends at the local library but it's like basic stuff like you know how to use windows or excel or whatever 
but he knows people. So like if, you, if I went there and asked him, he would say, oh, yeah, go here. Or there's this tech group that meets on Wednesdays. So it's, and it's like constantly just meeting people and talking to them and seeing what they know and getting information from them to get to the next point to where I'm trying to get my, my career or even just trying to find people with the same mindset as me. Which has also led me to, I guess at some point, I've been talking to the guy who runs the tech meets here locally that I'm going to hold two of them for juniors to kind of show up and we can kind of all work together and code together. So it's pretty exciting. And it's all through networking that I found all this out and literally just going through LinkedIn, um, the library, finding stuff locally here, or I've even, I've even struck up conversations at a local brewery with people that I kind of figured were in tech because they're all kind of in a group together, you know, wearing tech swag. So I just walked there and introduced myself and started talking to them. And they, they're also the ones that led me on to like, the gaming development group that meets and everything. So like just, you know, some social engineering was involved, you know, talking to people. Excellent. Yeah. And, you know, some people don't enjoy talking to people. And if that's you, no. I totally understand. Um, but some people, uh, it, it's a challenge. And I totally understand that. But if you can just put yourself out there and you can try uh, to network and try to engage with with others who are in the industry, it can very well pay off. Um, networking is a huge component to your career pursuits and career development. Um, so sometimes we just have to make ourselves a little bit uncomfortable in order to get to a place of comfort. Um, so that's that's a huge tip, JP. And it's it's interesting that, you know, uh, you can kind of find these people, these groups of people everywhere. I mean, even breweries. Um, so, you know, just put yourself out there and and try to connect with them. So that's an yeah, awesome just, step. Yeah, just like use what you have and what you know, you know, like if you're like myself, like, you know, if you're a veteran and there's veteran groups locally, go to those veteran groups because there'll be somebody in there that's probably got something to do with coding or engineering software or know somebody that can help turn you to that direction. Or if you're I don't know, a knitting enthusiast and go to a knitting meeting and then try to, you know, say, hey, like, is anybody here, you know, does software development or whatever? And if they have anybody and you talk about it, they'll probably turn you on to them. I, I do have a quick question. When it comes to finding these veteran groups, what, is it something easy as Googling or, or is there like certain websites we could look on? For um, such... I would say like go to like the VFWs and stuff because VFW. like. Yeah, okay. believe it or not, like the VFW, your local auxiliary stuff for like veterans, like they, they'll have someone there. They're not all old people that go in there and just drink beer and hang out. They actually go in there. There's a social, there's a social environment to that, that, that setting. And you can meet people in there that can turn you on to other groups or, or whatever, you know. Thank you very much. Yep. Great question. Um, So I have a question for... Uh, you, Jason, or JP, whichever one, but have y'all ever uh, come across any kind of virtual meetups um, for for the tech industry or virtual gameplay spaces? Anything like that? Anything like that? Yeah, I've, I've seen several um, different ones on LinkedIn. That's That's been a big tool for sure. Um, and a couple of the guys that I work with, they're they're big time gamers, and I know they have um, different groups that they get on. Um, they've met through like Twitch and uh, some of the different gaming deals. I know some of my son, you know, a couple of my sons, they're they're into that. Um, so it's it's just a matter of looking for them. Um, and then it seems like once you get on their mailing list, you get all kinds of invites oh. from different ones. Super cool. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Awesome. Perfect. So maybe the two of you um, can speak about um, continued education. So, you know, maybe it's something that you are considering for yourself or something you've seen in the career market, um, or it's something you've acquired because of the, the industry. So um, just speak a little bit about, you know, either the importance of continued education, be it like advanced education and associates or a bachelor's um, or different certifications and things like that.
Yeah, I came to Bottega with already having my master's degree. Um, so Bottega was basically a refresher. Oh, well, actually to get me more up to date. Um, and so, but I don't see anything wrong with, you know, starting with Bottega. And then if you want to go on and get more education, um, my son right now just got out of the army and he's taken um, programming classes at a college uh, here in Kansas. And so um, that's great because then him and I can talk. Um, but like through my company, uh, through Zoho, there's different certifications that um, we strive to get. Um, so there's definitely a lot of stuff to constantly learn. And since they're adding, since I started two years ago, they've added um, almost 20 new apps. So there's always stuff that I got to learn in, in my line, at least. Wow. 20 new apps. Wow. That's a lot. <laughs> it seems like there's always something that um, different developers can focus on or continue their, their development on. Um, so that seems like a big area um, for attention. So I, I just wanted to kind of bring that up because sometimes we have students who graduate and then they come back and then, you know, they come and do our associates or their, their bachelor's degree um, with us here at Bottega. And then we have some students who go on elsewhere to continue, you know, things like cybersecurity and whatnot. Um, so uh, it seems like continued education is, is imperative um, in this kind of industry and um, for, for the tech world. Yeah, and I'm switching careers, so like I'm jumping back in and I'm going for my associate's degree with Bottega, um, hopefully in June, which is going to, you know, help me be a little more competitive on a resume for sure. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, yeah, and I'm just going to put this spiel out there because I think it's um, an awesome opportunity just to, you know, keep in the back of your mind, but if you go through um, the full stack course and you complete it and you you think, oh, man, I would really love to continue my education either in other areas of you know certification or in the degree program. Those are opportunities. Um, so we, we have other certifications that are available like mobile development, application development um, and other things on on that list and then we also have our degree programs um, so we have like the computer science you know associates or bachelors um, and so those are opportunities and when you go through that full stack program you get those transfer credits there are 18 transfer credits that then apply towards your degree program so you've already taken what could be equivalent to like I think that's six classes at three credits a class, um, if I did my math correct. <laughs> um, so, I mean, that's a great opportunity, but also just remember those are transfer credits that can be applied at other institutions as well. Um, so just, you know, continue putting yourself out there. It seems like that's the, the major consensus for tonight is, you know, network, put yourself out there, continue developing yourself um, and don't give up. Excellent, excellent. All right, if anybody has any questions, make sure you put them in, in the chat. You know, they can be questions about, you know, how to find local groups, how to, you know, what are some things that they're noticing in the industry, um, things that people are talking about, languages, um, advancements, all that good stuff. Oh, yeah, and something like to say, oh, sorry, Mark. Uh, I'd like to say one thing about um, you guys as you're, especially the people that are kind of looking to finish up soonish. Um, try to be creative in how you go about, um, try to do more than just, you know, look at jobs, research jobs, research what job requirements are, and look at how you can supplement the training that you've gotten with Bottega um, with additional skills that you see listed frequently. Um, there are tons of resources online to learn 
to familiarize yourself and to even go deeper um, so you can see and, and broaden your uh, skill set. Um, so if you see something over and over that's listed like uh, um, like Docker or like um, Angular, uh, we do React, of course, but um, there are tons of ways to learn Angular. Um, if you're curious, we can try to um, connect you and and guide you a little bit. Um, if you see something and you're and you're not sure how to go about learning it, um, and try to be creative with um, getting experience because I know it's kind of a especially if you're brand new and you haven't worked in tech before, it's uh, difficult to say that you have relevant experience when you don't. Um, so try to find um, any way that you can to work on something. Um, we mentioned a little bit like finding these groups as you as you're going through, you know, we we sign up with accounts for um, numerous things like, uh, you know, GitHub and um, the React documentation. There's actually a community tab on the React docs page where you can connect with like the React community. They have a Discord server, uh, Stack Overflow, Reddit, as we mentioned. Um, along the way, notice communities and try to chime in with some of them if you are if you need help or if you can offer help. Um, and look for ways that people are doing kind of like volunteer opportunities where they have, you know, they're wanting help with something, but they can't afford to pay people but they have an idea and they're wanting, you know, help with people who can, who know JavaScript or Python, um, or even sometimes people will have a project and they don't have time to do the documentation for it, that kind of thing. Any of that can be relevant experience and it's not necessarily conventional. It's not a straight up job. Um, it's not a normal apply, get hired process, but it's stuff that you can list, it's stuff you can point to and put a link to on, you know, GitHub. Uh, to say I contributed to this. Um, if you guys are curious about it, here's a link that I think is helpful to research a little bit um, about finding ways to try to contribute uh, to open source projects um, because there are a bunch of them. It will probably not be the case that you can go on and like just hop into any project and, and know where to start or know how to contribute, but um, Look at it, see uh, a little bit of what, you know, what the direction is that you could go or what what you might want to focus on trying to master a bit more, if it's Python or SQL or Flask, um, whatever the case, see if it's something that you're interested in. And like I said, try to find ways to reinforce your learning, go deeper and um, connect with some of those people and make some of those connections and, um, get that experience. Uh, so just something to think about that I wanted to mention. Thank you, Mark. I think that's extremely helpful. Um, and I appreciate you adding that in. Um, so yeah. Um, and it looks like Jason, you answered Colton's question about like the homework and code exercises in the interview. So yeah, some and just in case, you know, y'all can't see the chat for whatever reason. Um, it looks like Yes, that there are some coding exercises, but then there are also verbal uh, questions as well. And then Ryan, it looks like you had a question about um, the relevancy of using or getting a uh, CompTIA A plus certification. Does anybody have any kind of input on that about its relevancy in the job industry? I'm gonna leave that open to you guys. I mean, besides only what I've researched, um, yeah. um, security is a big thing right now for sure. Um, I don't know if even more so than engineering per se, but like everywhere I've turned around, I see there's a lot of security jobs coming out, especially for newer uh, people getting into it because they're needing that uh, that security aspect, I guess. But Comp TI or Comp TIA A plus is like. What I understand is like one of the great certificates to get to start out with for sure. Comptia sounds... has certificates. They have certificates for a few things like cybersecurity is a it's a different one. Uh, 
the A plus is just IT. It's networking and um, network hardware uh, infrastructure. Um, they have a few of those. The CompTIA certificates, uh, I think, are. I don't have one. I've looked at them a little bit, but they're pretty desirable. They're pretty good. They're a pretty good credential to have. The IT one is, I think, one of kind of the gold standards for if you want to start out with IT. Um, so I think that's a good one. Uh, the security ones are, I've heard good things about them too. They're a bit involved and I've heard that the exams are hard. I haven't looked at the exams, but uh, if you're interested in IT or in one of those directions, definitely that's worth um, looking into, I would say. Yeah, and their course is about $300 average for the comp T uh, A plus. Excellent, excellent. So it sounds like you're on the right track, Ryan. All right, it looks like we have another question. Are there any learning resources that you would recommend, such as books or podcasts or any anything else that comes to mind? This is for anybody who wants to answer, JP, Mark, Ooh. Jason, whomever. That's my favorite because that's what I do. Right now, I listen to a ton of podcasts and at least listening to it, I can get some ideas of stuff I need to look up. So like Code Newbies podcast is great. I love it. Um, they actually have a lot of people who jump on there that talk, like Danny Thompson. Um, I follow him on LinkedIn. Uh, he's always putting stuff out. Um, I also listen to Syntax, which is a like an, it's like a JavaScript-based um, podcast. It's great. They have terms and stuff that they throw out, and then I um, – I just take those terms and remember them, write them down, then I know I can go home and look them up and see what they are if I don't know them. That's the two that I use, and I, I YouTube a lot of stuff. Ania, I can't remember her. I can't say her name, but Ania is one of them. And, and Andrea, if, tonight I'll get with you if you want me to. I'll show you the ones that I go to. Um, she has a lot of tutorials, but like she also does like a coding boot camp, per se. She'll go through some stuff each individually and talk about like asynchronous uh, synchronous JavaScript, uh, how to build stuff with it, why to use these different things. So like, yeah, I, I love that. I, I spend most of my time of the day doing that. When you're delivering flowers, JP? Yep. Or even at home, I got nothing else to do. <laughs> For That's that awesome. code newbies one, how do you spell that one? Is it just N-E-W-B-I-E-S? Yeah, so um, just code newbies. Okay. Awesome. Thank you. And it looks like Colton um, asked for a link, or maybe you can just kind of write down some of oh. the the podcasts that you were listening, JP. Oh, yeah. Let me see if I can. Uh, when you do that, I'll find the links. Excellent questions, everyone. Good deal. All right, we have about five or so minutes left tonight so make sure you get all of your questions out um and make sure that you connect with you know jason on um linkedin and make sure that you are connected with bottega's fabulous tas um, we have james dumas that's who you're speaking to um that's JP, as well as Mark Estrada. Um, and I can list all the other fantastic TAs so that you can um, connect with them via LinkedIn. Uh, I wanted to mention also briefly, I posted that link for in the chat for the React community page. Um, they have a Discord server um, that has semi-frequent talks and events um that are pretty helpful i would i would say if you guys are uh, wanting to stay on top of react and um developments in it uh developments with the with the framework or the library um and uh people who work with it uh, their experience starting out trying to get jobs um they have that um they have those people on kind of like kind of like this uh if you guys want to follow it and track it, I would say that would be pretty good too. Excellent. Um, it looks like Elliot has a question about thoughts on getting certified in React. What are some thoughts about that? 
as in like getting a specific certification on React. I mean, it never would hurt. But just know that when you graduate from here, you're getting a certification in full stack development and React was the heavy part of this course. Excellent. Jason, did you use a lot of React? I, I can't remember exactly, but um, I believe that you stated something about React. Is, is that the language that you tend to use a lot besides the main um, other language? Uh, that was the one that um, one of the ones that I learned during the course. Um, I've used it a little bit since. Um, like I said, I'm primarily um, Deluge now. Right. And so I do try to stay up on it um, as well as Python, only because um, my son is going to be taking those courses um, in his college um, degree, too. So I figured eh, I can at least hopefully help him out. Excellent. Awesome. All right. And then Ryan um, has a question. I believe it was for Mark um, mentioned contributing to open source. Are there areas that an inexperienced developer could contribute? Um, it looks like that we may have a student or so, an alumni with imposter syndrome, but go on, Mark. So, um, I haven't myself yet contributed to open source um, to to give a context to that. Um, it's something that um, it's hard to say. I haven't I haven't honestly looked into it as much as I need to. I've spent a while trying to look at it and like you mentioned, uh, imposter syndrome, I didn't feel like I knew enough yet. Um, but I would say that definitely research it and look at what some of the requirements are. Um, look at people, uh, that, I, that I've looked at and seen generally are pretty good at trying to label, uh, requests for contributions as, you know, experienced and experienced, uh, people try to label cause they, they try to, they try to, they're aware of this, that. People are starting out they may not know quite as much um so they try to label you know good first contribution efforts if you just google open source contributions for for coding you know specifically for python or javascript and stuff you already know um look at what look, look at what's there um i've seen people do this that they can't necessarily write code or fix bugs that kind of thing um but they can help update documentation or write small, you know, portions of documentation. Um, I would say look at it and see if there's anything that you think you might be willing to tackle. Um, message the person if you can track down um, an open source project that's available, message them and ask, you know, I'm not sure is this, uh, here's my experience. Um, here's what I know, how long I've been doing it. Do you think this would be a good fit? Um, They'll work with you, I think. Um, so, and if not, you know, you'll have an idea, like look into it and see, here's what I need. Here's the steps I need to take to get to the point where I can contribute. Uh, and you'll be able to kind of direct your steps more, um, more purposefully and being able to get to the point where you can contribute. Does that make sense? Um, so yeah, I would say look into it. Um, okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, imposter syndrome is real. Um, you got, um, I would say probably everyone's going to face it um, to be overwhelmed by how much that you don't know. Um, don't let it stop you from moving forward. Um, keep trying to move forward and and um, learn more. There's always so much to learn. Fantastic. It looks like everybody can um, agree with that last statement. So, um, it looks like we're at the top of the hour, so we're going to go ahead and wrap up for the evening. Make sure you connect with everyone um, via LinkedIn. So we have Mark Estrada and JP or James Dumas, and then uh, Jason Grogan uh, speaking with us this evening. So make sure you connect with them via LinkedIn uh, network. Um, you never know what can come along through the, the process of networking. Um, so connect with them and... 
stay tuned for next month's dev meet. Maybe next month we can we can get some more developers uh, speaking about the industry and other career um, development goals. So y'all have a great evening and we'll go ahead and stop the recording for this evening.